Welcome back to the Kicks 96.5 Morning Show. 30 minutes past the 9 o'clock hour. Well, Saturdays in the square are back this weekend with headliner the Sweet Lilies. They're an Americana bluegrass band from Boulder, Colorado. They just released their latest album called Equality. They've been on tour for the last seven months. They just dropped a video for Words. And we're excited to have bassist, singer, mandolin player, guitarist. She's a jack of all trades. It's Julie from the sweet lilies julie thanks so much for coming on well thanks so much for having me good morning yeah good morning holy cow you guys went from the peach fest to chicago to bliss fest you've been on tour for seven months i I mean can you can you imagine it all can you wrap your head around all this julie you know it's funny because it's it's a dream, really. It's a dream come true. It's what we really want. We want to just be playing full time all the time. And but yeah, if I really look at the miles we've covered, <laughs> it's hard to imagine. I'm like, how did we do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, and the Peach Fest was huge. Were, were you able to experience it all? We got to be there for a full day. So we played our set. We had two sets in the festival, and then we did get to like see my morning jacket and we got to we got to see a bunch of different acts uh chris jacobs who we adore and we're, we've become friends with um it was just a bunch of great acts to catch new people people we had never heard of or met what a just a lineup of amazing music oh, amazing, amazing lineup for i think yeah. four days or three days at least at uh, peach yeah. fest your yeah. new album equality this yeah. band has changed a lot throughout the years first it was going to be all females then a couple ladies left you meet dustin you add a drummer what's been the biggest change in the hardest decision throughout this band you know i think the biggest change in the hardest decision was are we going to invest in the three-part female harmony like driven concept or are we going to go more into the sort of rock hip-hop um You know what I mean? Because if you think about, like, the way the band started with all that female-driven harmony, it was beautiful. And quieter. We would have been more like a mid-day festival set or, you know what I mean, like a different kind of set. Um, And as we were, like, evolving, I think, yeah, that was the hardest decision was, like, how, like, who do we want to be? (laughs) <laughs> and as we started to, because really that, you know, I mean, that's everybody's thing, right? But, like, we really had to figure out, like, what what represents, you know, who we are. And we realized, you know, we're an edgy sound, and we need a drummer. And we need some heavy-hitting sounds to go with this, like, almost like hip-hop Americana thing that we realized how much we loved. So we we do sometimes bring in a third woman um, for big shows, and it's a wonderful thing. But we realize we we need like a saxophone piano player more than we need another female vocalist. Although the women that we work with have been incredible and have done incredible things, and you know we, it's been a great honor to do that aspect of the work. But that's not the ethos of the band anymore. That was yeah. a hard decision, especially for me. Because I saw it like that in the beginning. Yeah, well... my vision. Well, exactly. And I thought it was all females when I started listening to you guys. And I'm listening to Common Ground, and all of a sudden, Dustin's singing a song. And I was like, what's going on here? Is this still the sweet release? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And well, it turns out the, the dudes are a lot more gentle and kind. I think women are... We're tough, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, who, you know, who are the real... Sweet lilies, but um, you know that that is what happened. So now it's evolved, and I think the the next bigger, even bigger evolution will ultimately be adding, you know, a piano at some point down the road and a horn player. That's yeah. my goal. Well, we've seen a couple of bluegrass bands in the last couple of years add a drummer, mm-hmm. and, and it kind of goes, you know, you kind of disrupt the community a little bit. But then after they hear you with a the drummer, they're like, okay, well, maybe we'll accept it because. You're still good, or I, I don't. I don't know what it is. You're, you're breaking well, th- tradition by adding a drummer. We are, and I think it follows in the vein of Leftover Salmon, Railroad Earth, yeah, um, bands like that, where um, they've taken you know because like Leftover Salmon, they call themselves polyethnic Cajun slamgrass, 
<laughs> and I think they they paved the way for bands like the Sweet Lilies, really, to be able to incorporate a lot of different styles into the string feel. And we still work at that beautiful, like, Beck and I sing the harmony together, still have that beautiful harmony thing that we do together. But it, it yeah, it just takes it to a different place. And you can dance, really dance to what we're doing, I feel like. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. People too. Yeah. Yeah, you're classically trained on the piano. You play guitar. How the heck did you get to the bass? So the bass was a, is an interesting evolution because my classical training started with piano and voice. My father was an opera singer, and so we trained our voices and the piano. Um, and then I picked up the guitar at eight, picked up the mandolin at like 20, and then shortly after... Um, when I realized, like, in music school that I I was really a chord movement person, like, I was constantly thinking in chord movement, bass players think in chord movement. And so somebody was like, hey, do you want to try my upright? And, I, and that was it. I was like, <laughs> oh, yes, I'm going to play this thing. So, you know, and I, it just it consumed my attention. Like, I would just play it and play it, and I'd be like, you're supposed to be practicing mandolin right now. But then I would just get consumed with the bass. I wouldn't put it down. And after a while, it, like, took over my, my persona. Yeah, it did. And uh... It did, yeah. And the, <laughs> the bass that I have is so interesting because I would, have, I would never have been able to afford that instrument. But, like, it was basically given to me. I mean, how wow. does that happen? You know, yeah. this uh, jazz musician was like... Um, I know you, you play the bass. You should have a bass. I have this bass. I don't use it. How about you give me $150 for it? And on the spot, you know, I was young, and I was like, $150, that's a lot of money, but here's $150. Exactly. You know? I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. And now I have two basses, which is crazy. Yeah. Wow. We're talking with Julie from the Sweet Lilies. Go check them out. They're going to be at Saturdays in the Square this Saturday night in downtown Buffalo. They are the headliner. Uh, go and check them out, sweetlilies.com. You and Becca, she's also classically trained. You met like 10 years ago. Was yeah, it? Yeah, and I mean, Becca. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I mean, did sparks fly? Did you know right away? What? So it's an interesting thing because um, I was sort of exiting an all-female driven band and I was looking for a little while to play some I was playing a bunch of like singer-songwriter gigs and yes when I first met Becca the way that she played she's a violist by trade the way she played viola to my songs like really struck me like I was like wow because she was really young remember she was like 23 yeah and I was like her phrasing, her musical phrasing, just like hit me in my heart. And I hired her to play with me. I was like, I've got these gigs, you know, and here she's barely out of, out of music school. She's barely out of school, you know, but she played in the orchestra. So she had no limitations musically. So I was like, okay. And so after a while of working together in these singer songwriter gigs, I was like, let's start a band. Let's just start a band. You know? Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah, but I definitely I definitely think Sparks did fly with her and with Dustin when we ultimately met him. Like, I do think that musical connections are like that. Yeah, well, I, I think you said you jammed with Dustin for like 12 hours all night long or something. Or, yeah, <laughs> it was day. like, it was like, it was actually daytime. We had, Beck and I had decided we want to get to Hangtown Halloween Ball. But we were too small musically to be hired in Hangtown Halloween Ball. So, you know what we did? We volunteered to work in the kitchen for free tickets. <laughs> so, her and I are in the kitchen working four-hour shifts. And, by the way, they tried to hire us for next year because we did such a good job oh, yeah. in the kitchen. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, that we, and then on the, we would be in the campground. and we would, you know. So, I started a jam in the campground because, you know, you need a bass player to start a jam. So... And then Dustin's band came over, and Dustin ended up, he was in a band called The Low Flying Birds. And they came over, and 
Dustin ended up playing with us all day into the night. For I mean, it was. It was like 10 or 12 hours. It just went on. And the people that showed up at this jam, Drew Emmett showed up at this jam. It was so, so wild. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was such a big, it became this huge jam. Like, um, um, Scott Pemberton, like his percussionist showed up with all this percussion. I mean, he's like a brilliant guy. It just became this amazing event. Yeah, well... And, and bluegrass jams, wait. they just continue on and on. <laughs> yeah. Well, and then we had to wait for Dustin to become free because you don't poach band members. You yeah. know, that's like against the rules. You don't like steal people out of bands. So when Dustin became free, that's when we were like, Let's, you know, come tour with us. Come play with us, you know. Yeah. Let, that's how that happened. Let's go snag him and, and not let him go. Well, uh, quality, go. I mean, building momentum throughout the years, throughout the albums, was there more pressure on this album? Was there more excitement because we found kind of our groove? What was it when you went into the studio? I mean, there was more excitement in a way because for the first time, you know, we're being backed by a record label and for the first time we're being asked to sound like us. Yeah. You know, and to really be asked to like, so I, you probably know Chris Pandolfi from the, uh, the infamous String Dusters is the producer on this album. And he, during pre-production, said, I want to hear the Savage Lilies. I know about the Sweet Lilies. I want to hear about the Savage Lilies. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? And he's like, I want you to write for this record like that. Wow. And so we did. We sat down and we wrote collaboratively especially me and Dustin, we just like stood around writing. And then we would toss back at the idea and be like, put some rap on this or put, you know what I mean? Put some ideas around it or she like, or the other way around, she would come in and be like, this is what I have, put some stuff around. And so I think that like all the other records we've made, we have really loved, but I think this record really represents the beginning of what the sound that's going to, keep evolving as us yeah sounds like yeah e equality you're gonna hear a lot of it this saturday at saturdays in the square in crazy woman square right here in downtown buffalo I, I was listening to common ground your album before equality frayed from common ground the last song i just fell in love with that song what, what is it about finding love what's it about <laughs> Well, that is Becca's song, and I actually love that song, too. We almost always play that song, so you'll definitely hear it this um, upcoming weekend. Um, but I think, Freed, it might be more about, well, okay, here, here's what I'll say. Becca writes in such a way that you can interpret it to what it means to you. Yeah. So sometimes what I think she's writing about isn't <laughs> what she was writing about. <laughs> so I can tell you what I what it feels like to me. But ultimately, she might never really say what it's really about. But she lets people interpret her. She has a very deep way of constructing words, right? If you listen to her words, she's, it's deep. So yeah. I think it's a lot about, like, learning how to create, like, a life that is clean on all sides and honest and integritous and good, I think that's a lot what that song is about. Yeah. Edges are frayed all the same. I'm learning how to make it last. Yes. Because edges are frayed. It's like, it's saying like, I struggle. Like people struggle, right? Yeah. The edges are frayed. Everything isn't just perfectly hemmed and easy all the time. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. And well, in Equality, the, the track listing, I love it because 18 Wheels was the first video. It's track nine. Equality, the title track is eight. Words, you just released a video for it. It's track 11. So you got to listen to the whole album, which, which, uh, which I love, instead of the first three songs or the singles and then the rest is whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was, we asked Chris Pandolfi to help us with the track order because that's a hard, that's actually a hard yeah. thing to put together. But like, I thought words should be the first song on the record. That was my first. Wow. Song. Yeah, I thought, I, that's my, my, for some reason that's the one I like the best right now. <laughs> 
You know? well, well, you didn't win that, that dispute, Julie, because it's track 11. So. Absolutely not, because in the end, your producer is, you know, has to be listened to because they are there to help you. And Chris Pandolfi has won a Grammy. He has been nominated for more than one. He went to Berkeley School of Music. He is a powerhouse of ideas and musical concepts and capacity. So, you know, um, same with the album in a way, you know, same with Common Ground. We had Tim Carbone from Railroad Earth producing that one. And Tim has a funny joke where he says, well, it's this much if I produce it and it's this much if you produce it, which basically <laughs> means don't sit in here and tell me what to do. Like, that's not what I'm here for. Exactly. Let and, me earn you know, my money. Exactly. So when you bring someone in at that capacity, you have to listen to them. You know, and so that really speaks to how how we work, I think, collaboratively. Yeah, with people and each other. Yeah. Is Chris, is he the one then playing drums on the no, video? No, Jason, Jason Hahn from String Cheese Instant plays the drums. Oh, okay. So that's Jason in from the, String Cheese on the from video. Che String Cheese, yeah. I think in that words video, yeah, that's him. Yep. Wow. It's not our full-time drummer is Jones, but... Yeah, but yeah, um, we didn't have Jones when we made this record. Well, that's what I figured. He must not have been with you guys. He wasn't. And actually what we did with, um, because Jason is so talented and so skilled, Jason was given free reign on this music. Like, I didn't tell him, and Chris didn't tell him, this is what you have to play. He was given all the music and asked to come up with ideas. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? I that's mean, amazing, Chris, yeah. Chris guided it, you know, there, were, there was guidance, but Jason is so extremely gifted that he, I mean, he just does this, you know, and that's a lot of what came out of it, and it's really, it's, we feel very lucky to, to get to work with Jason when we do. Well, and people listening to the interview are going, well, Julie said hip-hop, what is she talking about? Well, you guys do have some songs where Becca's rapping in them. With Beck word. is a great rap artist, <laughs> and, turns out. And equality. I mean, when you're writing the songs, is it like this is your rap part? How, how, how does it happen? Well, yes, kind of. Like, <laughs> I, I noticed, it was a few years ago that I noticed that Becca, I, and it was in a rehearsal, she was like, just kind of like rapping a song, like, and it probably wasn't serious. She was just doing something. And I turned out, I was like, you are really good at that. Like, really good at that. How come we don't do that in the show? And it took a whole year to convince her to do that in the show. I had to, like, work on... She was like, no, I'm not going to do that in the show. I'm like, no, you you have to do that in the show. This is so edgy and different, and I love how you can do this. Exactly. So, it turns out that Becca was on the drum line all through school, and that is where she gets that precision of rhythm and beats, and you see what I mean? So when you're a rap artist, rap artists are a masters of rhythm. That is what they are doing. Is they're using words to create like a, almost like a drum beat. And so our favorite rappers, you know, people like Queen Latifah, Salt and Peppa, all these beautiful, incredible artists, the Beastie Boys, that's what they're doing. A lot of them are, are pro-trained classical musicians who, you know, whether they're drummers or whatever they do. So, so that's kind of what happened. I started to be like, I'd like to hear, you, what would you do if you wrote your own rap song? And that was where the first rap song came from. It was, it's the um, In Love With The World from, the, from Common Ground. Yeah, from Common Ground. And then my idea is that I really like to have vocal lines. Um, I like to have vocal lines weaved into rap concepts, spoken yeah. word and vocal lines together. Yeah, and so you guys are trading off. It's awesome. We're trading off, and then we even do stuff like we even take it another level, and we trade off the spoken word. I'm not as good as at as Becca. Like, like I've I've recorded myself. I've tried to do what she's doing. It's so much harder than it looks. It's so hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, so hard. It sounds like all you would be doing is being like, "Too many times have I told myself you're over." <laughs> it's so hard to do that and get it out like the way she does. Oh my gosh. It's yeah. a skill to be admired, really. You can go watch them in action. Saturday night, it's free. Saturday's in the square, downtown Buffalo. Uh, I think it's from 5 to 9 this Saturday night. The Sweet Lilies, you can go check them out, sweetlilies.com. You just dropped the video for words. It's You're in the studio doing it. Don't let up until you get it right. 
tell us about the song, Julie. Um, so words are is a real song about wor- like it really is about what it sounds like it's about. Um, there's so many aspects of communication that human beings struggle with, right? Like how do we put forth an idea? How do we have a difference of opinion even? Um, and how do we reconcile all these different aspects of our internal selves with our external selves? How do we talk to people? How do we speak to ourselves? And that's what words is really about. And, you know, don't let up till you get it right. Don't let up until you get to the root of what you're trying to do, trying to say, trying to be, you know, um, like what are the words for? Who are they for? Like that's a part of the song. Um, are you seeing, are you seeing what you're looking at? Like stuff like that. It's like, reconciling what's in your mind and what's in reality what's in what do i say versus what do i mean and precision of language it's just i think it's really all about the human dynamic and how challenging it is to just be real with yourself the world around you and be successful in what you're trying to do yeah and don't let up until you get it right don't because you're eventually you'll get it if you keep trying <laughs> yeah go and see him saturday night at, at uh, saturdays in the square at crazy woman square right here in buffalo go check him out sweetlilies.com go listen to equality it's everywhere it's an awesome album julia thanks so much for coming on thanks so much for having me it's been a blast here they are it's words it's the sweet Woo! lilies it's kicks 96.5 <laughs>